I'm Lily, and in this video, I will show you five tips that make my macrame projects easier and save me time. I hope they will do that for you too. Watch to the end and I will share some bonus tips. If you get value from this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell to be notified of future videos that might interest you. If you have any tips of your own to add, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear which tip you like best too. My favourite is tip number one. No surprises there. Whether you are new to macrame or have been creating for many years, it's never too late to learn new ways to make the journey easier or quicker. Don't you agree? Okay, let's get into it. My first tip is to tape the ends of your cord before you start your project. This will ensure that the ends don't fray. Use sticky tape. If you are designing your own project from scratch and you're not sure what lengths you will need, taping the ends with labels and writing the lengths on the label can be very helpful. You can also number the cords so that you can keep track of which cords end up being too short or too long for next time you make the project. My second tip is to cut your tassel before you comb them. The longer a tassel is, generally speaking, the harder it is to comb without the fibres knotting. By cutting first, it will be much easier to fray and comb and give you a better result. You can always trim again after you finish combing for a perfect result. The tassel on this keychain isn't very long, but you can see the difference it made from combing it when it was at its full length to combing it after it had been trimmed. It's a lot easier and saves a lot of time. Tip number three is the lark's head cheat. This is the way we traditionally do a lark's head knot, but if you are attaching the cords to a dowel, then there is a much easier way to do it. Take the center of your cord and flip it into the lark's head shape, then sim simply slip it over the dowel like so. You can attach several cords this way in the time it would normally take to attach just one. My fourth tip, or tip number two as we are counting down to number one, is to measure just once and then use that cord to cut the remaining cords. This of course only works for all your cords of the same length. It may not seem like it, but this really does save time when you have a big project with a lot of length to cut. I always use the first cord to measure all the subsequent cords and I tape the ends so they won't fray. My number one tip is to use a paper towel holder for your rolls of macrame cord. This is the paper towel holder I use and the roll fits perfectly on the small bar. You can use any paper towel holder that works for you, but the point is that it keeps it off the floor and helps it to flow. This is the paper towel holder that I use now and it attaches to any smooth surface with suction. I have it attached to the leg of my craft table and it works perfectly for me. I hope you found these tips useful. Keep watching for my bonus tips. Bonus tip number one is to use an easel with either a cork board or a felt board. I picked up my easel on special for just $29.99 and it really saves my back and shoulders from all the strain of leaning over to work on my project. You can pin your work to the board and you can sit or stand upright as you work. 
This is one of those things that once you get it, you will wish you got it sooner. Bonus tip number two is for hanging your work. You can use a clothes rack like this. This one is very old and well used. Or you can use a hat and coat rack like this one. This one is from Ikea and I love it. As you can see, I have lots of projects hanging on this and I like to use it for my cords when I'm not using them as well. The other thing that you can use is a door hook. This one hangs over the doors and can be moved and used on any door, including cupboard doors. That's it for my tips. Let me know if you have any to add. Thanks for watching and see you next time.